ready to see the fourth fight between Sugar Ray Robinson and Gene Fulmer. What happened in the first three fights, Jack? The first fight was in January of 57 in Madison Square Garden. Fulmer won a decisive decision. Uh, they fought again uh, in May in Chicago, and that was the fight where Ray Robinson knocked Fulmer out with the one perfect punch, the most amazing punch I ever saw in boxing history. Describe it. A sh it was half a hook, half an uppercut. It traveled about four inches. You really can't even see it in slow motion. Fulmer just walked into it. Ray timed it perfectly. He kept suckering Fulmer in, and Ray was going backwards as he knocked Fulmer out with this perfect half hook, half uppercut. Fulmer, who had a great chin like Turpin, went out uh, and never remembered getting, getting hit like that. He was over in the other corner jumping up and down, and I asked my manager, I said, how come Robinson's doing exercise between rounds? And he said, it's not between rounds. And I said, what do you mean? I said, he said, they counted 10. And I said, it must have been on me because I never heard any of it. And in the third one? The third fight was a, was a, a draw uh, in 1960 when, when Robinson was 40 years old. Most of the reporters thought Robinson deserved the decision, which would have been the, the sixth time he won the middleweight championships. And, and so now the fourth fight is in 1961, Ray is 41 years old. Uh, ten years past beating LaMotta for the first time he won the title. Uh, he's already had about 197 fights. And at this time, he, he's taking a lot of abuse for being, for, for being greedy, for wanting too much money. Well, he had lost everything to the IRS. Like, like his boyhood idol, Joe Lewis, he got into debt to the IRS. Banks foreclosed. He, had, he owned a whole block in Harlem. They took that away in 55, which is the reason for this last comeback. And in his desperation for money, which kept him fighting, he became almost a Kurt Flood of boxing in his twilight by suddenly being the first fighter to demand a share of radio revenue, TV revenue, film revenue, uh, ancillary rights. And he paved the way f to revolutionize the economy of boxing for fighters. But I remember in the 1950s, Robinson saying, there's one guy I'd fight for nothing. And a sports writer said, who's that? And he said, Phobos, meaning <laughs> Governor Phobos of Arkansas. We're not going to see the Phobos fight, but we will see him fight Gene Fulmer right now. Welcome to the fight of the week. I'm Don Dunphy, your ringside commentator. From the beautiful convention center in Las Vegas, Nevada, champion Gene Fulmer of West Jordan, Utah, and challenger Sugar Ray Robinson of New York City will battle for the NBA middleweight title. They're meeting each other for the fourth time, and the honors are all even with a victory apiece and a draw in their three previous efforts. Fulmer, who was born in 1931, is 10 years younger than Robinson. This will be his fifth defense of the title, which he won by beating Carmen Basilio in 1959. His overall record in 58 fights shows 52 victories, including 23 knockouts and two draws. He has lost three decisions, and his lone KO was by Robinson. Incidentally, that is Gene's only defeat in almost six years. Robinson, who once retired undefeated as welterweight champion, is attempting to take the middleweight crown for the sixth time. He has one of the great records of boxing, 155 fights, winning 143 with 83 knockouts. He has lost eight and fought three draws. He suffered one technical KO at the hands of Joey Maxim in a bid for the latter's light heavyweight title. And now let's go up into the center of the ring and the ring announcer, Dick Porter. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a pleasant Western howdy partner from the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Tonight's 15-round middleweight contest, presented by the Silver State Sports Club, with Norman Rothschild co-promoting, is sanctioned and supervised by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Commissioners in attendance, James Gay, the third acting chairman from Las Vegas, Pat Brady, secretary from Reno, James Deskin, Las Vegas, and John Gamut from Elko. Positions at ringside, Dr. Donald Romeo and Dr. Charles West. Inspectors, George Maxwell and Joe Sheck. The timekeeper, Al Johnson, counting for the knockdown, Art Harris. The judges, the Right Honorable Judge David Zenoff, the other judge, Jack Ty, your referee, 
Frankie Carter. Now to the principals for this all-important world championship fight. In the white corner, wearing white trunks with the red stripes, the former world welterweight and five-time world middleweight champion, weighing 159 and three-quarter pounds, from New York City, Sugar Ray Robinson. In the black corner, wearing white trunks with black stripes, one of modern boxing's most active champions, the middleweight title holder, and weighing also also weighing 159 and three quarter pounds from West Jordan, Utah, Gene Fomer. Gene Fomer. Now, here's your referee, Frankie Carter, for final instructions for both fighters and may the better man win. Into it. All right, this is what I want to remember. When I say break, I want both of you to stop punching and step back. No rabbit punch, you remember that. No kidney punches, no low punches, no unnecessary reference at all times. Whether you're against the road from the center of the ring, when I say break, you both stop punching and step back. You shake hands on the now and I'm not boxing. And I only give you three commands while you're boxing. Stop, box, and break. That's all I'll say. I'd like to say something else. Shake hands on boxing. Scoring here in Las Vegas is on the five-point must system with five points to the winner of the round, four or less to the loser. Even rounds, each one gets five. There's the warning bell. We're waiting for round one. It's a 15-round bout. They're wearing eight-ounce gloves. The ring is an 18-foot ring. That is the bell. Uh, they don't seem to recognize it. It wasn't a gong. They've got a bell here. And we're getting off to a staggered start. Uh, according to the clock, 23 seconds have gone of the round already. They are starting over. Both boys wearing uh, white trunks. Robinson was ripped back to the rope that time. Robinson a little the taller of the two. Homer's face is well greased. I might add that there's little love lost between these two gladiators. Robinson on the right, Homer on the left. Frankie Carter of San Francisco brought in as the referee. Former has a big patch of Vaseline on the left side of his mouth, just above the uh, upper lip and below the nose, to the side of the nose. Keeping his gloves up high, as you can see. Robinson is noted for his great combination. Former can fight either by moving back or by lunging and rushing in. He's not a picture-style fighter, but he is effective. One minute to go in round one. Watch his butt. Hey, watch his butt. Watch his butt. Well, watch that inside work. They're pretty rough on the inside. Robinson with the classic stance, a long lead left, a bolo left. You'll notice that Fulmer is going to work the body. He's trying to slow down the faster but older Robinson. Uh, 
They're both fighting pretty much the same way as they did before. Ten seconds to go in round one. There's the bell. The bell here is not a gong. It has just sounded for round two. It's more like an alarm clock. Incidentally, the official cards are handed to the commission after each round here. Robinson knows that Fulmer is prone to cut around the face and he's working on it. But Fulmer has been blocking them. Fulmer draws a warning. Robinson is looking to putt shot Fulmer. He's got that right, straight right or left cross ready. There it is. Robinson is piling them up at this point. Half the round is over. Seconds to go in round two. Schedule for 15. Robinson started the polo, so it's better on it. There's the bell. We go back to the NBA middleweight champion corner. That's Gene Fulmer. On the outside facing him is manager Marv Jensen. Leaning in over the ropes on the left-hand side is very capable trainer Angelo Curley. On the outside, his... Uh, Masur Taggy Bonstad. That's a, I'm not sure the name is right, but anyway, that's he who gives such a good rub down. We go over to uh, Sugar Ray Robinson's corner now. The five-time middleweight champion is uh, well shepherded over there. On the outside, on the right, is Dr. Mike Holloman, his personal physician, facing him and working on him with a nice pack is his trainer Harry Wiley and his advisor. George Gainford is on the outside of the rope. Only a few seconds left in the rest period now. Scheduled for 15 rounds at Las Vegas for the NBA middleweight title. There's the bell for round three. Fulmer has been picking off some of those jabs by Robinson. Like that, for instance. Oh, they both got mad there. The 
this pressure has to tell on somebody. Two minutes to go in round three. Now it's Foma who is applying the pressure on Robinson. They've both drawn in uh, warning infractions now. Foma has a, a little bit of a cut beside his left eye on the on the left of the left eye. as much trouble as we have ever seen him as Fulma finished the round strong and they are working on Robinson in his corner. It's nobody's fault. Nobody, the fighters or the referee, heard that bell because of the terrific bedlam here in the convention center in Las Vegas. And George Gainford and Harry Wiley rushed in from Robinson's corner and the referee did not know it and it is not anybody's fault. You just could not hear that bell. They are working furiously on Robinson. He was in real trouble. There isn't any question about that. The warning whistle. The warning whistle for round four. There's the bell. Round four. Robinson doesn't come out. Of, now he comes out. The handlers didn't get out of the ring. Good the round, the minute rest did Robinson. Fulmer bleeding from that eye again. Fulmer bleeding around the left eye. Robinson is going to seek to get him one good one to turn it his way. and two minutes to go in round four. There's a smear of blood beside and below the left eye of Dean Foma.
One minute to go in round four. Robinson coming back. Former dangerous. Looks like a fight for survival. Ten seconds to go in round four. There's the bell. Five, scheduled for 15 in Las Vegas. On the left-hand side, the NBA middleweight champion, Gene Fulmer, and his opponent, Sugar Ray Robinson. Both wearing white trunks. Frankie Carter, the referee. You'll notice that Fulmer has started at a faster pace than he did in the bout last December. keeps coming in relentlessly. Robinson up on his toes, former fighting flat-footed. Those uh, punches by Robinson, uh, rather by Foreman to the body are not eye-catching, but they're effective. There was a low one by Robinson. Robinson told to keep them up. One minute to go in round five. Ten seconds to go in round five. There's the bell. Six. Robinson on the left, Fulmer on the right. Now Fulmer's on the left, both wearing white trunks. Robinson a little the taller of the two. Fulmer keeping the gloves up high. Robinson scored solidly to the head and former returned the fire to the body.
Boma has been applying the pressure in the last couple of rounds. a minute to go in round six. There have been no knockdowns. Although Robinson was staggered in round three. About 15 seconds remaining in this round. Well, I hope they hear the bell this time. There it is. They heard it. At the end of round six. Next Saturday night, the fight of the week moves to Syracuse, New York, for a 10-round middleweight battle between Carmen Basilio and Don Jordan. Cecilio beat Gaspar Ortega in a rousing 10-rounder on the fight of the week in January. He has thrilled many millions of TV viewers during a long career as welterweight and later middleweight champion. Cecilio is looking for a shot at Paul Pender's middleweight title, but he has a mighty formidable obstacle in Don Jordan, also a former welterweight champion. Jordan twice defeated Virgil Akins for the title, but lost it to Benny Kid Perrette right here in Las Vegas last May. Now under new management and a much more matured fighter, Jordan is looking to climb back to the top of the ladder. Carmen Basilio versus Don Jordan on the fight of the week next Saturday, brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company and the Miles Products Division of Miles Laboratories. Coming up to round seven now. There's the bell that pace has been tired all the way. Robinson is always dangerous, and Fulmer knows it. He's trying to get in to muffle the long shot. Fulmer looked at it, getting a little fancy, but that was a solid right. minutes to go in this round. Round seven scheduled for 15. Raising punch. Pretty good, too. One minute to go in round seven.
Ten seconds to go in round seven. There's the bell. This is a pretty good contrast in human beings, isn't it, Jack? Well, it, uh, it pretty much fits uh, a theory that my old friend Customato, the, the trainer of Floyd Patterson and Jose Torres, once told me. When he, he said the first thing he looks at if he's going to train and develop a young fighter is how pretty he is, how good looking he is. I said, and I said, what do you mean? What's somebody's looks got to do with whether they're a good fighter? He says, I have a theory. The greatest fighters are pretty. Muhammad Ali, Ray Robinson. Uh, he said, I don't like to train ugly guys because they don't want to learn defense. <laughs> ugly guys don't care if they get hit, how many times they get hit in the face. And he said, look at Fulmer, look at Basilio, look at LaMotta. There was never an ugly fighter who was a good defensive fighter. <laughs> so beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and in Customato's eye, Mike Tyson was beautiful. Yeah, and and, and that, that's how you Well, I, and I think at the beginning of his career, Mike had defense, which he, which he lost uh, later on in his career. At this point in Robinson's career, the, the, this fourth, he's 41 years old. Uh, Fulmer is, is in his late 20s. Can you see the end here? Yes, ab absolutely. This is this is the sunset of uh, of the greatest fighter who ever lived. I think. We'll go back to the fight right now. They're coming up to round eight in the beautiful Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. The NBA middleweight title at stake. Gene Fulmer on the left, Ray Robinson on the right. The bell. I remind you, it is not a gong, it is just a long bell, a ringing bell. Angelo Curley, the cut man, the trainer of Fulmer, has done a remarkable job on the cut near Fulmer's left eye. It was very bad a while ago. Of course, it can reopen, no question about that. Simultaneous attack that time. Round eight is half over. From a strategy, Robinson likes to fight at long range. He's got the guns for it. Former a little shorter armed, wants to get in there. That's a, a big rally by Robinson. Twenty seconds left in the round. Robinson Connor. There's the bell. Across from our cameras, you may have noticed a distinguished group of people sitting in the first row of ringside. This row is called the Las Vegas YMCA Sponsors Row, and there's quite a story behind it. Each ticket in this row sold for $1,000 probably the highest price in boxing history. 
The purchasers were a civic-minded group of local citizens. The proceeds from these seats are going to a building fund for a new Las Vegas YMCA. A number of the people you see sitting there are the guests of the ticket purchasers, including, of course, the two gentlemen of the clergy, Father Crowley and the Reverend Goodmanson. Other guests you might recognize include Benny Goodman, Danny Kay, and Phil Harris. So that row is worth $14,000, and the YMCA building fund gets a healthy boost. We're coming to round nine. Gene Fulmer on the left, Ray Robinson on the right. NBA middleweight title at stake. Apparently, uh, Robinson's corner told him to pick up the pace, and he has done it. And he has reopened the cut beside Fulmer's left eye. You see, both have scored heavily in this round. Two minutes left in the round. Robinson doing the holding. One minute to go in round nine. Twenty-five seconds left in the round. <laughs> Robinson ran into one there, as Foma has run into many. Now Foma ran into one. Ten seconds to go in round nine. And there's the bell. Round 10 coming up, 15 rounds here in Las Vegas. There's the bell. Former on the right, Robinson on the left. NBA middleweight title at stake. There is now a cut beside Robinson's left eye. Robinson has a mild cut beside the left eye. And it's looking a little angry. It's an identical cut to the one Fulmer has. All right, this is a fight for survival. Less than two minutes remaining in this round. Four 
Boyce may be coasting a little bit. Homer now has started to back away instead of coming in, but he comes back. Robinson scored a good right uppercut that time. Sugar Ray live and graceful as ever. And he has cut pretty badly around that left eye, I would say. Well, each one is scoring in turn now. Less than a minute to go in this round. Punches and making even the ringsiders win. And there's the bell ending round 10. We go back to Gene Fulmer's corner. Gene has never been the graceful type of a fighter, but he's putting on a savage defense of his uh, championship tonight. Angelo Curley uh, leaning in from the left-hand side is the man in charge of the cut. And that's manager Marv Jensen, who has guided the, his fighter through all these years. Here's something of interest to all sports fans. The best in boxing every Saturday night is just one of many outstanding sports attractions presented by the American Broadcasting Company. Championship college basketball, NCAA football, Sunday football, golf, and bowling are incorporated to create an exciting and diversified ABC sports lineup. The warning whistle is sounded for round 11. Scheduled for 15 here in Las Vegas. There's the bell. Palmer holding Robinson against the rope. The referee is Frankie Carter, brought in from San Francisco. Scoring here is on a five point must. The winner of a round gets five points. The loser gets four or less. Even rounds each get five. They're battling in Fulmer's corner with Fulmer holding Robinson against the rope and bothering him no end. Robinson cut around the left eye again. Fulmer's is not bleeding at the moment. Less than two minutes to go in the round. doing a pretty good job of smothering Robinson's attack. But Robinson scores heavily on occasion. One minute to go in round 11. There have been no knockdowns in the fight. Palmer had a very big round in round three when he hurt Robinson.
means that every time one scores a big one, the other scores one too. Ten seconds to go in round 11. <laughs> There's the ball. Coming up to round 12 here in Las Vegas. Gene Fulmer on the left, Ray Robinson on the right, both wearing white trunks for the NBA middleweight championship. Pace slowing down a little bit. It's been a grueling one. Forty-five seconds left in the round. Aaron Robinson's corner now with Fulmer on the outside. Fulmer keeping the pressure on. There's the bell ending round 12. Let's go back to the corner with Sugar Ray Robinson as Harry Wiley wipes him off. Sugar Ray, one of the great fighters of all time, retired undefeated as the welterweight champion and is trying to win this middleweight title for the sixth time. Uh, the career of Ray Robinson goes back to 1940. There he is. And uh, you can barely see the slight, slight cut uh, near his left eye. He has been in one of his most grueling fights tonight and win or lose, though, there is no question of uh, Robinson standing in the fistic community of all time. We are coming up to round 13. There have been no knockdowns in the fight. Fulmer had a particularly big round in the third round when neither the fighters nor the referee heard the bell, and they battled for maybe 15 seconds after it. Here's round 13.
You can still see that Robinson has the old move. Less than two minutes to go in round 13. Frankie Carter of San Francisco, the referee. Incidentally, as I told you earlier, and you might have not have heard it, Robinson in a big rally. Sorry to tell you, the cards are collected by the commission after each round. Ten seconds to go in round 13. A comeback round for Robinson. There's the bell. Former on the left, Robinson the right. Now it's Robinson the left. He's saying that they're both wearing white trunks. There have been no knockdowns in this fight. You've been with us all the way, you realize how tired the pace has been. seems almost indestructible tonight.
14. Angelo Curley, the cut man, who has done a fine job with Fulmer tonight, walks in there. The referee just walked between him and us. Both uh, men have had good cut men tonight. Robinson had a cut around his left eye, and that seems to have been pretty well patched up, too. Well, we're coming to the big one, round 15. And still no knockdowns in the fight. Frankie Carter, the referee, here it is. but two minutes left in the fight. There have been no knockdowns. Maybe he's tried. It's been a bristling encounter. I think after this one, they'll each need a long rest. Just a minute left in the fight now, one minute. And announce that Dick Porter is waiting for them so he can announce them. There are two judges and a referee here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we are going to interview the winner when the decision is announced. The cards are still being added. The scoring is on a five-point must system. Five points to the winner of a round, four points or less to the loser, and five points to each man if a round is scored even. It was a savage duel all the way. There were no knockdowns. Each man scored heavily. Homer had one big round, the third round, when both battled after the bell for at least 15 seconds. Nobody in the place heard the bell, the fighters or the referee, and as I said earlier, you couldn't blame them. The cards are still being tallied by the Las Vegas commissioners. Dick Porter is reaching for a microphone. Here comes the decision in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge David Vinoff scores it 
70 Fulmer, 64 Robinson. <laughs> Judge Jack, Judge Jack Ty scores it 70 Fulmer, 67 Robinson. <laughs> Referee Frank Carter scores it. 70 Fulmer, 66 Robinson. The, the winner is Bill Kemp. Unanimous. Unanimous. Fulmer, unanimous. Unanimous decision. Team Fulmer, unanimous. There was a little confusion over the way it was announced, and the winner and still middleweight champion of the NBA is Gene Fulmer. Uh, apparently, something went wrong, and for a moment, uh, Gene, did you think that they had announced Robinson the winner? No, oh, I was listening pretty close. <laughs> I, I couldn't too hear many it. draws there, Don. <laughs> I, I, I re recognized right away that I had won. <laughs> for a you didn't want another draw, did you? No, I surely didn't. I'll tell you, Don, I was glad that I fought Robinson when he was past his prime because he was a great champion and. Uh, He's got a lot of well, courage. Okay, now tell us. Uh, you had a big round the third round. Uh, you had him at the bell, and uh, neither of you heard, heard the bell. Is that right? Uh, well, I didn't hear it. It was a funny bell, and I thought it was a... Yeah, we're looking up for an alarm clock. It was kind of hard to distinguish, but uh, Robinson's a great man. No question about it. Well, one more question, Gene. Did Robinson hurt you at any time? No, he didn't. He didn't hurt me at all any time, but like I say, he was in shape to win tonight. And uh, I'm glad I was in better shape. Well, That's Jane, all. I suggested that win or lose, both of you need a little rest after this draw. Well, I'd say so, Don. I've been at it pretty steady. And uh, I could, my mates is waiting, and I got a few quarter horses that are waiting. Good. Good. Taking care well, of the one, one, one thing, what have, what have you and Mr. Jensen planned for your future now? I really don't know, Don. Uh, like you say, we both need a rest. Maybe we'll rest for a while beside... Uh, what we're going to do, I really don't know. Thank you very much, and congratulations, James. I want to get Marv here. Marv, I think we have a moment. Did the fight go the way you planned it? I didn't have anything to do with it. This was Gene's fight. He went all out. I didn't have anything to do with it. I just wanted to sweat it out. But Gene came through, and this proves that Gene won the championship in spite of me. Well, no, don't say that. You're no, a fine man. A great Tell me, uh, did he fight a better fight? I thought he fought a better fight than he did I think he in uh, his, December. I think it was one of his best fights he's ever fought. To the way, Robinson, that was a great fighter. No question I'm just about. glad that Gene never had to meet him when he was in his prime. Very yeah. good. Thank you very much, Bob Jensen. And that was our interview with the still middleweight champion of the world, Gene Fulmer. We're back in Victory Yard with Jack Newfield. 41 years old, more than 200 fights, 200 professional fights in his career. Did Ray stay on stage too long? Absolutely. He, you know, his, probably his last great fight was uh, with Maxim, which he should have won. After but that, he, was broke. Uh, he needed the money. What did it do to him, fighting those, those endless, endless years? Well, I think, I mean, one of the ironies that makes boxing a guilty pleasure for me is is that like Muhammad Ali and Joe Lewis, there's almost like a curse on, on the three greatest fighters of the modern era. And Robinson had a very tragic uh, last decade of his life where he was afflicted with Alzheimer's disease and didn't know who he was most of the time or who he had been. And there was a period, I think, maybe early when, when he, he was beginning to be affected where he went through a very nice sort of period where all, all the, the, the vast ego that he had shown earlier in his life seemed to disappear, and, and he sort of went through a humble period, and it was kind of fun to be with at that time. Yes, I also think he was heavily medicated Later in that on. period. And uh, he, I saw him in 85 at the uh, great Hagler-Hearns fight in Vegas, and he seemed totally out of it and did not realize who he was or where he was. And uh, after the fight, he had sat with Teddy Brenner, the old matchmaker at the Garden. And I asked Brenner, how bad is Ray? What's his condition? And Teddy said, he's gone. And I said, what do you mean? And he says, in the middle of the second round of the Hagler-Hearns fight, 
uh, Robinson tugged on Brennan's sleeve and said, did I fight ever, either one of these guys? If he had, they wouldn't have been standing there. <laughs> Jack Newfield, thank you for joining us. Thank you. For Sugar Ray Robinson, Night at the Fights, Classic Sports.